But if at T minus four and a half hours, the weather check shows no sign of a possible launch, we don't fill the tanks. That's just one of the details about the launcher. A little more general, she stands 50, 5 oh meters tall, in two parts or composites. The lower composite includes the main cryogenic stage and the two boosters. And there is the upper composite, which includes the upper stage, a single engine, and of course the fairing and the two satellites, which you saw. And also the vehicle equipment bay, which is the where all the computers and the navigation systems are housed. Standing 55 oh meters tall, I think we mentioned 31 meters, the height of the boosters. Take a look at the yellow bars in the middle of your screen there. At two minutes before liftoff, we want to linger on a shot of these cryogenic arms, also called the propellant feeder arms. They're going into the upper stage. You can see that there. This is a split-screen image of them, liquid hydrogen on the left, liquid oxygen on the right. The upper stage needs to be filled right up to the last minute before liftoff. Why? Because the cold propellant evaporates in this heat. And when I say cold, liquid oxygen minus 160 degrees, liquid hydrogen minus 240 degrees. So they require a constant topping up. Those of you here tonight, or if you have been here for a launch, you know what I mean. The DDO... Amy Sip will call out the one-minute mark, and we'll be into the final 60 seconds. À tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Top. H0, moins une minute. So here we go, the final 60 seconds before uh, Ariane leaves the ground for the fifth uh, launch of the year. Here's what to watch for. When uh, the DDO calls out minus five seconds, those cryogenic arms, the yellow bars that we mentioned, they will retract. That starts the ignition sequence. At zero, she will call out Allumage or Allumage Vulcan, which is the name of the engine, Vulcan. S and the main engine lights up. Since it's her first time, I don't know exactly what she's going to say. We'll discover it together. But we don't lift off yet when the main engine lights. Count to seven. For seven seconds, the computers are checking the performance in the main engine while it's burning on the pad. They do that twice to confirm it. If all is well, they give the order to light the boosters, and away we go. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage UAP, décollage. So, right on time at 18.38 local and uh, right on target. Ariane uh, began her mission. You saw her come roaring up over the, uh, over the ground here in French Guiana. Fine shots, always impressive for people at the observation sites around the base or in their cars, around the beaches. 774, 774 tons. DDO says everything normal on board. 774 tons at liftoff as Ariane leaves the ground. That's her mass. She's burning five tons of fuel per second. That's 2.5 tons in each booster. And the core stage, burning another 300 kilos per second. She's following the program now on the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including stage separations, which we will soon see. We're in the first of four flight phases. All is normal, she uh, says, the DDO. The first three uh, flight phases are powered. The last is not. We'll describe each in turn and in detail so you can follow Ariane as she heads across the Atlantic, where she'll separate the two satellites once she gets over Africa and beyond. Right now, the first flight phase, the single Vulcan core stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will burn uh, for just over two minutes each, another 20, 30 seconds roughly. They are the first to be extinguished. You'll hear the DDO call out that milestone. The three powered flight phases, if you're anticipating, are right now the main engine with the boosters, then the main engine alone, 
then the upper stage, then we have a final flight phase which is not powered and we'll get back to that when it happens. Fine shots as Arian leaving a trail of gold and they're right on time is the separation of the boosters at about uh, 69 kilometers up. You can see them there flaming out. They're on either side of there. There's one point of light in the middle. That's the main engine burning and the two boosters with the vapor trails are going to fall back 500 kilometers roughly from shore. Before the boosters are empty, their push diminishes and the onboard computer senses this drop in acceleration and decides to separate them and that occurs one second after the computer has detected this speed loss. Coming up next will be the fairing separation, but before that, on the upper left of your screen, you see the cursor crawling up to Sepkwaf. I don't know if you can read Sepkwaf. That's separation of the fairing. There are two lines there. One is the nominal trajectory, one is the actual trajectory. As, as long as they're one on top of the other, we're right where we should be. And we've had confirmation of the fairing separation, which occurred right uh, as it should be. On the bottom left, look at the bottom two lines. A is your altitude, 120 kilometers. V, the velocity of the speed, 2.32 kilometers per second. This is a shot of what uh, happens with the fairing separation. There's another half on the other side of the uh, frame. The fairing is dropped at over 100 kilometers because it's done its job, which is to protect the satellites from Earth's atmosphere. More on the mission in a moment, but first, the latest news from Arian Space.